Have you ever wondered why your dog is super aroused and maybe even aggressive when people come into your home, people that he doesn't know or she doesn't know? It's a real common issue, and it's called territorial aggression. It's one of the seven major types of aggression. In today's episode, we're going to explain what's going on and what you can do about it. Stay tuned. Are you struggling with a dog that is anxious or aggressive? You're at the right place because in this podcast series, we educate dog owners, veterinary practices, and dog trainers on how to overcome dog fear and aggression using humane methods. My name is Scott Schaefer, and it's my mission to help you better understand your dog's behavior. Territorial aggression. What does it look like? This is what it looks like, and it almost always looks the same with all dogs. And it kind of presents in two ways. The most common way would be the front doorbell goes off or someone knocks at your front door. Your dog immediately goes ballistic. The person comes in the door, a person, by the way, that your dog is not comfortable with. They come in and your dog stays about four to five feet away, kind of circles a little bit like this and is barking, is not tearing their eyes away from that person and is clearly uncomfortable. When the person comes into your home, the dog never really does go up to the person, but stays at a distance and never takes their eyes off the person. Things can kind of start to calm down a little bit after a while. In fact, the dog can almost look like it's being a little friendly. But as soon as that person stands up, talks loud, moves, it all starts again. And another common symptom of this would be when the person goes to leave, Boy, your dog is right on their heels on the way out. That would be a really common presentation of territorial aggression. In some cases, when the person comes and the dog will actually kind of jump up on the person. It's not a friendly jump up. It's, I don't want you in here. I'm not loving you too much. It's not a friendly jumping up. That would be kind of a common thing as well. Does your dog have territorial aggression? How do you know if your dog has territorial aggression? that I just described. Well, here's a couple ways you can test. First, do they do the things that we just talked about? Another really great test is if your dog is 100% okay with all strangers outside of your home, never has a problem with humans outside the home, even people that they don't know at all, it's probably just arousal that you're seeing when, you're, when someone comes into your home. So a lot of dogs, most dogs maybe, when someone comes into your home, they're all excited and they have a soft body and the tail's going crazy and they just want to interact with the person. So one way to know that those behaviors are not territorial aggression would be if your dog is just fine with all strangers outside of your home. However, if your dog is not 100% okay with strangers outside your home, he or she probably does have territorial aggression. If it's looking like what I just described at the first of this episode it probably is some form of territorial aggression. Let's talk for a second now about what causes territorial aggression. Well, it's simple, and if you've been watching this podcast, the video or the audio, it's fear and then aggression. So your dog doesn't want these strangers coming into, into their home. And it's their home, and that's their safe place. So it's one thing to see these people outside on the street but it's another to see them in their home. They don't like that too much. And that aggression is to say, don't come in or get out. And there's three reasons, really clear reasons, why this aggression is worse in the home than outside. And this is just almost universally true. Here are the three reasons. Number one, and the most important, it's your dog's safe place. They live there with a family. Everybody's cool there. They love everybody there. And then they feel kind of violated. And I'm kind of humanizing this a little bit. But they feel kind of violated when someone comes in they don't know and trust. And they want to get them out. This is not something that you see out that they would experience out on the street. The second reason would be that there's a sudden appearance of this scary person. So they're fearful of them that ding dong or knock knock, bam, all of a sudden they're there. They don't like that. It's not like out on the street where they see 
this human slowly coming up to them and they can kind of size them up. So that sudden appearance isn't great. The third reason is what I call avenues of escape. How is your dog going to get away from this person? I don't care whether you have a 500 square foot apartment or a 10,000 square foot home. Your dog knows that they can't get away from this scary person. So for those three reasons, that's why your dog is going to up the aggression level when they come into your home. And just to help you get into your dog's head, and I think it's always helpful, it's the same three reasons that you would be horrified if someone tried to break into your home. Suddenly they're there. This is supposed to be your safe place, and how are you going to get away from them? So I hope that kind of helps get you into your dog's head a little bit. Territorial aggression can be very dangerous. I've done a lot of legal consulting, and I'm going to tell you that most of the bad bites happen in this scenario. This is where you push the dog to the limit. When a scared dog doesn't like a stranger coming in the home is where we really see this escalate. It's some of the worst bites I see. And I just want to give you a caution here before you listen to this episode. Do not do these exercises we're going to talk about if you have any concern at all about your dog biting somebody. So we're really looking for a dog with mild levels of territorial aggression, no bite history at all, and you have no concern about your dog biting someone coming in. You're just concerned about their aggressive and unfriendly behavior. If it's anything beyond this, please talk to a certified canine behavior consultant in your area that can help you with this. All right, with all that being said, I just want to mention here real quickly, if you would like to write me, please go to grumpydogspodcast.com and you'll find a way where you can send me a written message or a voicemail message. So please do that. That would be great. Love hearing from you guys. Grumpydogspodcast.com. Now let's talk about five things to do before we go any further. I'm going to give you five considerations, going to lay the groundwork a little bit for this exercise we're going to be discussing. And I'll go over the mechanics of handling the people and your dog when someone comes in your home after we talk about these five things. But I want to be clear on these five elements first before we go on. Number one, remember that your dog determines who a stranger is. For example, I have certainly seen a number of dog bites where someone comes in the home and the dog has territorial aggression or some form of that and bites the person. And the person replies with something like, but it was my sister. Well, that's fine, but it's not your relationship with the person. It's your dog. So if your dog has never seen your sister before, or for some reason is a little scared by her, she wears funny clothes, who knows? That's the dog's relationship with the with the human, not yours. So always remember that your dog is the one who determines what's going on here and who who they are scared of. Number two, let's review a couple of very important rules. These are exceedingly important, and I've covered these in other episodes, but let me just briefly go over them here. When someone comes in your home, the last thing your dog wants, because they're already scared by this person if they have territorial aggression, the last thing your dog wants is to get any attention from this person. Why? Because it makes them look more scary. They're scarier. So here are the rules for your person. And you're going to tell them this. You're going to say, my dog is afraid of people that they don't know. Please don't look, touch, or talk to my dog. And secondly, don't approach. So here are your two rules for a person. And you can't say ignore my dog because people don't get that. I've been down this road many times. They don't understand ignore. You have to be very specific. Hi, Joe. Thank you for coming over. My dog is afraid of unfamiliar people. Please do not look, touch, or talk to my dog and don't approach them. Okay, super, super important. And I'm going to tell you that really, in so many cases, can really calm your dog down. All this attention that people give in an attempt to create a relationship with your dog backfire. Your dog doesn't want to interact with them. They're already scared, and that kind of attention makes them look scared. All right, number three, you'll need a designated safe place. Maybe you already have one, but let's talk about 
the three ingredients of what's needed for a safe place for your dog. This is kind of a staging area for your dog that we'll talk about later. Here are the three ingredients for the safe place. It needs to be off the main drag. In other words, I don't want it to be in your living room or in your den. This needs to be a place where the dog can be put away and has no line of sight to the visitor. Okay, that's number one. Number two, it needs to have some level of sound isolation, meaning a closed door. So we want to be able to put the dog in a place, can't see the person, and you can close the door. And thirdly, we want some white noise or some music in the room. And this goes a long way to help calm the dog a little bit and to cover up the noise of the visitor. And the best kind of music, by the way, is classical music. We want it off the main drag. We want a door to be closed and we want some white noise or music in there. All right. Number four, let's talk about something that is really important here just to keep this problem from getting worse or maybe even developing in the first place. When your dog is looking out windows and barking at people going by, people with dogs or just people by themselves, you're making this problem worse. And I'm talking about not only barking out of the front windows of your home, looking on streets. I'm talking about people coming into your back lawn as well. The pool guy, the lawn guy, whoever's coming in your back lawn to do maintenance or something like that. If your dog is barking at these people, this is very bad. Let's talk about the front window first. When your dog is barking at people going by, do you understand that this is really territorial aggression in action and it's making it worse? Why is that? Because as the person walks by, your dog is barking, oh no, I don't like that person too close to my space, bark, bark, bark. And they walk by. What, are they, what always happens? They walk by 100% of the time. What does your dog think? Look how well this is working. It's called what? Reinforcement. Technically, it's called negative reinforcement, but it's reinforcing to this behavior. It makes it worse over time. We've got to stop that. And the same applies to the back lawn. If you have somebody come into your back lawn backyard, make sure to put your dog up. So what do we do about the front windows? Well, we have several options. We just need to remove your dog's line of sight to these people going by. We can do that by not letting him in parts of the house that have those windows. We can close shutters, shades, drapes, or we can put window film, like a frosty see-through window film. It lets the light through, but it doesn't allow your dog to really see the triggers. I'm gonna provide a link in the episode notes where you can see some examples of that type of window film. Remember, your dog is not six feet tall. Your dog is only a couple feet tall or whatever, and so you only need to cover the windows up to that level, and that will take care of that. Number five, the muzzle to be used as needed. I know I told you earlier, if your dog has any bite history or you think there's a chance they could bite, and this is anything more than mild territorial aggression, you need to get the help of an expert. However, I have some clients, and I'm on board with this, who in an abundance of caution, regardless of the size of their dog, want to put a muzzle on during these exercises that we're going to be talking about. I am on board with that. What you want to do is make sure you get the right size and you acclimate your dog to the muzzle so they're comfortable with it. This is very much easier than most people think. I have done it with hundreds of dogs. It's just not all that bad for the vast majority of dogs. Use a muzzle if you have any doubts when you're doing these exercises. I'm going to provide a link in the episode notes also on kind of the gold standard muzzle that we use for dogs like this. In today's episode, we went over what territorial aggression is, and we covered the five things to take care of before going any further with this exercise. This is the first of two videos on territorial aggression. In our very next episode, I'm going to cover how I want you to manage your dog and the visitor when they are in your home. It's a two-pronged thing. I'm going to save that for our next episode. And at our next episode, we're going to just jump right into that right away. Thanks for listening today. And before you go, I just want to remind you that I have some free and premium dog behavior videos. Just go to grumpydogspodcast.com 
and select video collection to view these. See you next time on the Grumpy Dogs podcast, where we'll continue our discussion of territorial aggression. Thanks for listening. Thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast with other dog lovers. Stay tuned for our next episode where we'll continue our dive into the world of dog behavior.